You know those times when you've experienced something so extraordinarily painful, upsetting, or disgusting that the only thought that comes to mind is, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Well, it is within this framework of thinking that, in my opinion, one of the most inhumane aspects to the ways in which narcissists think and behave and proves that narcissists not only lack empathy, have a total disregard for others' feelings, their insidious behaviors are most definitely intentional and their conscience be callous or pharisaical at best. Because narcissists use what they perceive to be the most grueling thing that they have ever experienced to the degree that they have dedicated their lives to do whatever it takes at all cost to prevent themselves from having to ever revisit it again. And not just wishing it onto someone that has bestowed wrongdoing, pain, and suffering onto them, which for some, if not many, would find more understandable, despite whether or not they would consider it to be just or fair, but rather onto those they have known their entire lives, as well as those to which they have sought out and targeted, lured into their web, conned into believing that loved, cared for, and had their best interests at stake. The ones who defended them, protected them, loved them, jumped through fire blazing hoops to prove their worth and devotion to them that they not only wished they intentionally and deliberately construct and employ that they would indeed undergo this horrific experience and not just experience it but that the experience would be drawn out prolonged continuously repeated and progressively get worse for them over time, sometimes drawing it out for years and decades, achieving this through the means of manipulation and deceiving them to let down their guard, using hot and cold treatments, sorting their reality, clouding their judgment and decision making, making it as so they would not know what was happening, defecating on their confidence, sense of self and sense of worth as to impoverish their ability to fend for themselves, cutting off all other resources and means for seeking help, doing it all in a careful and a discreet manner so the rest of the world is blind to it. Having not a shred of guilt, remorse, or regret for the things that they have put this individual through by intentionally destroying and devastating every aspect of their life as they once knew it. Instead, portrayed themselves as being the victim. Poor, wounded soul, done wrong by and used for their kindness. Wash, rinse, repeat, one to another, to murder the essence of the very being of their next target. Serial killing souls, one after the next. And though it is not crystal clear or 100% definitive as to how these demons truly come to be, the defense mechanisms that they developed, no matter how you slice it, are the result of learned behaviors that they have repeated over and over their whole lives, leading to their becoming masters of manipulation and constructing their false self to act as a cloak to cover up their true self, originally adapted in effort to maximize the support and attention they receive from their parents and to protect their fragile ego from criticism, rejection, and abandonment. But once this false ego gets developed, it stunts their maturity and they basically stop evolving and this false self remains very limited in its construction, never developing object constancy. This false self cannot see in shades of gray, viewing everything in extremes of all good or all evil, adopting this delusional belief of their false self being superior and more powerful than all else. Like a child playing dress up, they don themselves in this false self, locking up and tossing out the key of their true self. self. And over time, the original adoptive purpose of this false self becomes forgotten. But continue on using it as a defense mechanism to protect them against perceived threat into their adulthood. But their relational capacity is so stunted, having no core identity to ground themselves back to reality with, this false self that they originally adopted to protect them actually becomes more of a straight jacket as well as self-sabotaging. Despite forgetting why they originally adopted it in the first place, it is impossible for them to completely outrun 
reality. And every time they get a knock from the real world, just the slightest bit of criticism, sending them into a bout of narcissistic rage and almost seems like maybe they don't really see themselves or associate themselves as their false self and more so stay hung up on this delusional perception of their being more superior and more powerful than all, not identifying with their true self or their false self, self rather is one who lacks a self entirely. Seeking out and hunting their targets not to be with, to literally become due to this stunted mindset and emotional and relational immaturity, as well as having extreme insecurities made them hyper aware and very in tune to perceived threats, giving them their remarkable ability to mirroring and mimicking others through the means of trial and error and practicing manipulation tactics since a young child have it down to a science allowing them to read people far easier using the art of seduction, charisma, and love bombing to bait and lure them in, but not in the sense of wanting to form a emotional connection, bond, or have an attachment, but more along the lines of how an actress or actor would read the lines of their script, telling you whatever it is that you want to hear for you to let down your guard and for them to gain your trust. But unfortunately, due to this black and white mentality, the first time reality comes a knocking and they discover that you aren't this photoshopped image that they created of you in their mind, instantly go from perfect to flawed, which though had nothing to do with you or you even being aware that they had created this image at all are still held accountable. If they took accountability, they would be deemed as the villain or the evil one, which is what they have to avoid at all cost. Otherwise, their delusional world comes out crumbling down. Now, not only going from perfect to flawed, seeing you kind of like their sibling that broke their brand new hot rod or holiday Barbie they just got that morning for Christmas and they're pissed. So they bestow upon you the only real form of punishment they yeah. know, attacking yeah. your insecurities, destroying your sense of self, making you feel unlovable, unseen, and rejected in order to get their most bang for their buck, as well as prevent you from catching on and running off to tell mom and dad. Go about doing so kind of like playing a game of chess. Each move strategically and carefully planned out, feeding off of your suffering, making them feel more powerful. They are the only ones aware of your slow decay. Each trick, each deceitful, hurtful action, making them more cocky along with it. As to, this makes the narcissist more evil and more dangerous. Kind of like a shark sensing the smell of blood now more greedy than ever to get their teeth into wherever the source is coming from, tearing it apart. And once they have successfully pleaded the very person you once were, reverting you back to a near infantile state, they bestow upon you their grand finale, leaving you literally helpless, alone, with no one to turn to, nowhere to run to, lost, afraid, and completely empty, consumed and plagued by the feelings of despair, being unworthy and unwanted, bequeathing to you their biggest nightmare, their worst fear, the very thing they spend their entire life running from, which is why when you eventually come around and start remembering who you are, get yourself up off of that ground and start regaining and rebuilding your life infuriates them. It makes them feel weak because they never got to that point because they shut that person down so long ago, it doesn't even exist. And all they know, they don't remain the top dog, the most superior, powerful one in charge. Their delusional world is toast. So they hoover or continue hurling at you different ways to further along your annihilation. And as long as they have even the slightest bit of access to you, they will not stop. Narcissists know damn well what they are doing. They just don't care. They recognize and pick up on what is socially acceptable, quote unquote, normal. They know how to come off and appear to look good. But as far as you're feeling hurt, they could not give two 
shits. The only exception that the more pain they cause you, the more pleasure it brings them. And rest assured, they will do whatever it takes to destroy you and anyone else who crosses their path. These are not just disordered personalities. They're literally more like shape-shifting, trying to acquire and construct an entire new person from one supply to the next in efforts to rob you of your identity because they are truly soulless and spineless beings repeating the same cycle over and over and over. They have access to you. They will continue gutting you from the inside out. There, there is you. nothing that you or anyone else can do for them. Legit, inside there ain't nobody home, which that alone is scary as fuck. And why, seriously, you need to remove yourself from the equation. Get yourself off of their playground before you wind up six feet under it. And that is no joke. And they are not the person that you think you and know. And the most important thing to remember from all of this, like no shit, go write it down, tattoo it on your forehead, whatever you gotta do. The person that you have been fighting for, wanting so desperately to come back, that you have jumped through fire blazing hoops, effort for them to once again return has been you the entire time. The person you met in the beginning was nothing more than them mirroring and mimicking your mannerisms, behaviors, interests, likes, dislikes, stealing your ideas, taking credit for your thoughts. It was never them. They never exist. The person that you have wanted back is you. That amazing, wonderful person that you just got drug around hell face first by your ankle. Efforts to get back was you. And now is not the time that you need to stop fighting for them. Because now that person needs you more than ever. So take back the control. Fight for that person so you can get back their life, their sanity, and their freedom. No one is worth losing your life, your sanity, or your soul for. Especially not for that kind of a horror flick. Focus on you. Fuck the narcissist.